everybody, E here. Welcome back to another recent read. We're going to open up this one with a, what am I now reading, currently reading. So, the in audiobook, I am reading the first Lucas Davenport, yeah, Davenport book by John Sanford, which is Rules of Prey. I am currently, dun 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 Dun, 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 dun. I'm currently 191 pages into this. It's okay. Uh, it's generic thriller territory. It is what it is. Um, next up, we have another one. Um, I am. This is probably my least favorite read right now. Uh, it is Hark, the Herald Angels Scream. It is a Christopher Golden edited anthology. And man, can I tell. I don't care too much for Christopher Golden. The first two stories, I think, are terrible. Um, I'm sure everybody will disagree with me on this. Uh, also, I'm not in a huge horror uh, horror mood right now. So, I, I got this one at the library. Um, I didn't buy it or anything. But uh, the Ke Kelly Armstrong, I believe, is the first. She, she wrote the first story. Yeah, Kelly Armstrong did uh, Absinthe and Angels. I can't even... I read it yesterday. I can't even remember a thing about it. And then uh, Scott Smith wrote the second one. I love Scott Smith, but his story, man, 20 pages that all came down to the very last line and it wasn't that great of a reveal. Uh-uh. Okay. Uh, last, what I'm reading um, is The Chill by Scott Carson, which is very distracting. I am enjoying it, but it's very distracting because this is a, as it says in, in this, is uh, the... Author bio says that Scott Carson is a pen name for a New York Times best-selling author. Isn't everybody a New York Times best-selling author? Anyways, <laughs> I see you, BookTube goddess. I see you. Um, but yeah, this comes out February 11th, and I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, but it is kind of distracting because I'm trying to figure out who in the world, uh, yeah, who in the world it it is. But on with recent reads. Alright, so right off the bat, we're going to be talking about an audiobook I listened to. Uh, it is Bunny by Mona Awad. Uh, this is a fantastic, fantastic book. Uh, I don't know if it's going to end up on my best of the uh, 2019 list or not, but right now it is. Uh, I had no idea what to expect going into this one, and I'm really, really glad that I listened to the audiobook version because I feel like it gave that much more uh, to the story. There's a character character called Creepy Doll. Um, it's just one of like five very valley girlish college students, you know, like for sure kind of deal. And that character, the way the narrator did that character was, was very laugh worthy. Um, I had a blast listening to the whole thing, but there, it takes a turn. Um, I think it's going into part two. That just kind of really blew me away. Um, I, I was expecting weird because my friend M, Emily at Book Happy, uh, I think it's at Book dot Happy on Twitter and on Instagram. But uh, Emily and my friend Tracy, uh, both of them said it was a great book. Check it out, and I jumped into it knowing it was going to be weird. They said prepare for weirdness, and boy, I got weird. Um, I enjoyed every single. Not page, but every single hour, minute of the audiobook, I will eventually get the uh, the uh, hardcover copy of it, and I will definitely be looking up anything else by Mona Awad. Um, but right now, I, I I'm going to stick with just the audiobook because the audiobook was such a fun fun time, and I recommend that you check out the audiobook. But definitely give this give this book a read in any format that you can find it. Definitely expect some bizarre occurrences. It, it is written in such a style as like a Caroline Kepnes or maybe an Amina Akhtar or a uh, Araminta Hall or that kind of way. But there is there's definitely a weird supernatural otherness to it. And that's what I liked the most about the story and the book overall was how weird it was and how I had no idea what this author was going to do to me next. Um... There is there are several fantastic things like uh, there little uh, pieces slices of life uh, sections and some some words and terms that the author comes up with like gossip glow the glow that someone will get while they're gossiping about somebody 
Um, I, I just enjoyed the way that the author saw things. And there's a heavy theme of writing and creativity throughout the book. And as an author myself, as a creative person myself, I really, I caught on to that and I really enjoyed the book for that aspect. Also, there's uh, writer's circles in, in the book and those are some of the best parts of the book other than the weirdness that you're going to go through. And the whole, not the reveal, because it's very early on where the title of the book comes in, but how that theme evolves throughout the book is, is really amazing and I highly recommend this book. To anyone. Um, if you've read Bunny by Mona Awad, I'd love to hear from you down there in the doobly-doo. Let me know what you liked. Um, let me know exactly what you liked. Don't just say I loved it or I hated it. Let me know what you loved or what you hated. I don't mind if you didn't like it. Just express without being rude. Express. Tell me what you didn't like and maybe that will, uh, will spark something in me. Oh yeah, you know, you're right. I'm not going to sit down there and argue with you about why you're wrong about, you know, disliking it. Nothing like that. Anyways, on to the next one. Okay, so before we get on to the next review, I'm going to uh, put put to pause, you know, take a break. I'm going to show you some stuff that I picked up recently since I'm not doing book hauls anymore or now reading. Or rec uh, we are doing the recent reads, but I'm pretty much compiling all the all this stuff into one video. Maybe not every week, but uh, definitely, you know, on a... At least twice a month you're going to get one of these videos from me. I got Michael Moorcock's fourth book in his Elric Saga. Now I own all of these. Uh, if you've, There's a video on the channel called An Unexpected Collection uh, where I talk about my collection of Michael Moorcock books. This is The Vanishing Tower, which is book four in the original Elric Saga. Um, I do not have this cover, and it was only a quarter at the library, so I went ahead and got it. Along with that, I got Peter Tremaine's Blood Mist, a uh, booktube goddess. If you want this one, I think you were the one that mentioned Peter Tremaine. If you want this one, let me know and I'll send it to you for Christmas. Um, or any of these books, really. Uh, if anybody wants these books, let me know because I probably won't get to them. I bought these as gifts for friends kind of deal because I've seen some, some of my friends talk about them in their, in their own videos. So that's Blood Mist by a Peter Tremaine, which has got a great cover, dude with a sword, I think. Yeah, a sword, and then some kind of water dragon. Next up, we have Yellow Fog, which is definitely a vampire novel. Um, there's a woman laying here. Uh, looks almost like a Christopher Lee uh, kind of Dracula back here in the background. And then we have The Werewolf's Kiss. You're not going to be able to see it, but the stamping on here, it's supposed to uh, match this guy and this lady and it absolutely 100 percent doesn't anyways but this is by this is by sherry scotch yeah so sherry scotch yeah. if anybody wants this one anybody who wants any of these let me know down there in the doobly doo okay and so the uh, second review here on recent reads we are talking about the fifth book in the charlie parker series by john connelly the black Angel. Yeah, I know it looks like it just says black, but it does say the black angel. This one, um, and it keeps on happening, it's aside from the second book in the series, I, every, every new book in the series has become my favorite in the series, and this one is my favorite in the series so far. This one has a lot of uh, historical fiction in it. It has World War II elements. It has biblical elements. It has a bunch of stuff in here that I... Oddly enough, I normally don't enjoy, but with John Connolly's writing, he can make damn near anything interesting. Uh, I've really enjoyed the, the World War II aspect and some of the history there, and come to find out that a lot of the stuff that he talks about actually happens. Um, now, I, I've heard so many, so many different uh, opinions from people on when the supernatural aspect of these books gets really, really heavy. This one is where it jumps into a whole other level. Um, there is really, it's not that uh, you could have the story, it's not that you couldn't have the storyline in this one without the supernatural, but I think it'd be very difficult. Um, you can take the supernatural aspects out of the first four novels, and I don't think you would lose a whole hell of a lot, but in this one, he goes all in, both feet all the way up to his neck in supernatural content. Um, I don't care too much for, like, angels and demons in my fiction, mainly because I'm, I'm not a believer, I'm not Christian, I don't follow that, uh, that train of thought. But 
in this one, it, it didn't feel like some of those stories tend to. Um, like the, the angels are this all good power and, you know, the, the devil and his demons are this all evil power and there's no gray area. In this one, there's definitely 100% gray area. Um, everything is gray area in this one. Uh, it does have probably my least favorite uh, villain of the series. I think his name what Blackwell, something well. I can't bright Brightwell. That's it, Brightwell. I didn't care too much for him. Um, it was just another one of those lackey villains that you you know he's you know kind of like the side, not the side character, but he he's he's just a basic you know uh, minion kind of deal. But he has, you know, main villain qualities also. So it, my least favorite villain of the series so far, I really, really loved, uh, uh, what is his name? Kittim. K-I-T-T-I-M. I really loved him from uh, the last book. I love uh, Mr. Pud. I love the Traveling Man. Uh, Caleb Kyle, or Kyle, Kyle Caleb, whatever, from book two. It's another... Once again, book two, I can't even remember the name, Dark Hollow. Uh, that book just kind of is forgettable all, all around. I don't think Brightwell is really forgettable as much as he just didn't really leave a lasting impression on me other than his appearance. Everyone else that I mentioned, uh, the Traveling Man, Kittum, uh, even though Kittum was kind of a side, side character also, um, all these other characters, I really got to know these villains and I appreciated them for what they were. With, with this guy, it's kind of felt like a stepping stone, you know? Um, once again, Lewis and Angel have uh, another big role in, in this book. And they were a lot of fun to read. They're always fun to read. Um, they're the reason why I show up most of the time. Uh, I am, gonna ta I am t currently taking a week off of the series. But uh, I, I'm already itching to get back into it. I'm so used to picking up the next book right after finishing one of these books now that I wanted to jump right into book six, and I'm kind of getting withdrawals. I'm like, I want to get back into this. Um, hopefully that trends. Hopefully that keeps up throughout the rest of the series. I don't know if it will or not. But right now I'm itching to get into The Unquiet, which is the next book in the series. Have you read The Black Road? Let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Again, if you loved it, let me know why you loved it. If you hated it, let me know why. Especially if you're meh, kind of indifferent about this book, let me know that also. But go into detail about those things and we'll start a conversation down there in the doobly-doo. Okay, I almost forgot, as a segue going into the last, uh... The last review of this video, I got another gift from my friend, good friend, Glenn Krish. Is it Krish? I think it's Krish. If I pronounce your name wrong, Glenn, please let me know down there in the doobly-doo. But uh, he got the painter of Troy, uh, Piotrokov. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I know I'm going to pronounce it wrong, and I apologize. But it's the painter of this word, P Piotrokov. I, I don't know, but it's a uh, literary fiction, historical fiction kind of deal. Um, he is moving away from his horror roots, kind of like I am. Uh, and this, I believe, is his first take on like a, a magical realism or literary fiction, that kind of thing. So it has a beautiful Daniel Sierra cover. Sierra? I'm not sure. Uh, he, if you're a horror fan at all, you've probably seen this guy's artwork around. He used to do covers for, was it Delirium Books? Delirious Books? I can't remember what it was. Uh, Shane Staley's project before he did Dark Fuse. Had a lot of these covers. And is it, uh, he's done Hell Hellraiser comic book, all different kinds of stuff. Uh, very, very talented guy. But also, look at the inside. Hang on. Let me show you the inside of this book because the this is an independently published book. This is a self-published book. The inside is looks amazing it d did such a terrific job i want to give credit where credit is due so you have the color the cover art is by daniel sarah and the interior design is by michael bailey fantastic cover i've not read this yet but glenn was nice enough to actually to send me the book for uh, a review copy so thank you very much glenn for that i appreciate you last but not least we have a book that was sent to me by my friend kevin witten of Well Read Beard here on YouTube and on uh, Twitter. Uh, you can check him out. I'll try to remember to leave a link down there in the doobly doo, but I've talked about him several times. Uh, he's a great dude, uh, re really, really good guy. Um, and I, he mentioned, he asked me if I wanted to copy this book, and I said yes, and he sent one over, and I read it 
as soon as I got it. That's Whispers in the Dark by Laurel Hightower. Uh, this book was good from start to finish. And one thing that I want to stress here. Um, every single independent author I've ever read, there has been something that has told me that they're an indie author or that they're a small press author. Uh, Laurel is not a in indie author. She is a small press author. This was published by Journal Stone Books, and Journal Stone has a great track record of publishing very high quality books. Um, but every single indie or small pu pu press book that I come across, I can read it and go, okay, there it is. There's that one thing. Usually there's multiple things, but usually there's that one thing that, may, that lets me know this is not a traditionally published book. Whether it be spelling errors, grammar problems, whether it be the formatting, whether it be the cover design, whatever it might be, there's always something. I said on Twitter that I can count on one hand the number of indie small press authors that I have read where I can't find at least one thing that screams this is indie or small press. Laurel Hightower is now one of those authors. Nothing about this book says indie or small press and I, I felt like I was reading something from Crown Publishing or Scrivener, even FSG. In fact, I would go as far as to uh, compare this book and this is going to sound odd coming from someone who doesn't love Dean Koontz anymore. But this is almost like Dean Koontz wrote a Clive Barker story. The story is dark, it has supernatural elements, there's a lot of Clive Barker in this book, but the writing is honed almost perfectly to, the, there's an error here or there, but it's like two or three, what you would find in a traditionally published book. It's not full of errors, it's just minor typos that happen to the best of us. Um, but Dean, Dean Koontz has a very polished way of writing. You don't find too many errors or problems or anything with his writing. That's what I felt here. It was very technically sound, well put together. There were some aspects of the story itself that kind of made me not really, not really cringe, but made me go, eh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. Um, it had some stuff to do at the end about it, like a chosen one kind of deal. And anything that has like a chosen one um, or Matrix storyline kind of deal, I kind of shut down on. So that would be the only thing where I would I would give any kind of criticism is that there were certain story elements that did not vibe with me. And I'm going to give it a very strong four stars on Goodreads or Amazon or whatever. I would probably give it 4.5 stars only because of certain story aspects, like I said, completely subjective that I myself didn't like. The writing, the publishing, the form, everything about this book is fantastic. Um, I, there are no problems with the technicalities of this book. Um, like I said, it's just a, that one story element. Now, uh, if I'm going to talk about criticisms, another thing is that we didn't get to know the kids all that well. In fact, right now I just got through finishing the book tonight. I don't remember the kid's name. Oh, Lily. Lily is one of the kids' name, and not Sam. Sam's there. Uh, Tommy. Lily and Tommy, we didn't get to know them as much as I would have liked. Um, I don't know if there was even time for that kind of development. So maybe not. Um, and yes, I am being overly critical here because that's, that's how I am. You are probably not going to notice any of this stuff. If you are just an average reader coming across this book, you will probably think that this book is perfect, that it is fantastic, and you would not be wrong. Um, I've had... I, I've read so much indie small press fiction that I've become hypercritical of anything that comes out from that market, um, and it's just the way I am. This book is perfectly fine. There are no problems with it as far as like the general public w will feel. Um, I am very impressed that this is a first uh, book, that Laurel H Hightower is a new author, because it certainly doesn't feel like she's a new author. It feels like a book that you would go down to Barnes & Noble or Books A Million or anywhere really, any chain store, even Walmart, that you would walk in there, go over to their book section. This feels like a type of book that you would pick off of the shelf there. It is, it is that well done. Um, it speaks to the quality of Laurel's writing alone that I would say that because, like I said, I can count on one hand. I'm not going to say who's who. I can count on one hand the authors in small press indie uh, area 
that I can say that about. Um, I do know, oh, and as a disclaimer, I do know Laurel on Twitter. We're not best friends or buds or anything, but we do talk back and forth. We follow each other. We've had interactions. She's an acquaintance of mine that has not colored my review at all whatsoever. If anything, it probably makes me a little more critical because, you know, people will point out, hey, you talk to this person every now and again. So, of course, I'm going to be a little more critical because people, you know, are apt to say, oh, you're only saying that because you know this person. But, uh, yeah, have you read Whispers in the Dark? Uh, let me know what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, if you were mad about it, uh, whatever y your feelings about this book down there in the doobly-doo. Last uh, thing I want to say is thank you so much, Kevin, for sending me the book, because if you hadn't sent me the book, I never would have read this. So I really do appreciate you, man. That's Whispers from the Dark by Laurel, Hart Laurel Hightower. But that's it for this time on Recent Reads. Uh, if you have any comments about uh, any of the books that I read or any of the gifts that I've received or any of the books that I got the libra library, leave all your comments down there in the doobly-doo. You have two weeks of best of stuff coming up. So next week and the week after that will be full to the brim. And then I'm going to take an entire week off. I will continue to warn you guys, but I, after these next two weeks of videos, I'm going to take a week off and just go and do absolutely nothing with my family. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Recent Reads video. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!